right. So today we're um we're going to be taking a deep dive into Warren Buffett's letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders. Yes, this is going to be good. This is not just uh you know some dry financial report. Mm -hmm. This is like getting a master class. Yeah. In investing from one of the greatest of all time. I, I think what I really appreciate about these letters is that yeah. Buffett doesn't write these for Wall Street. You know, he's not writing these for analysts, right. day traders. It's for like regular investors. Yeah, just like you listening right now who are looking to build wealth slowly yeah. and steadily for decades. And the coolest part is he writes the whole thing mm -hmm. as if he's explaining it yes. directly to his sister, Birdie. It's such a great framing device. Isn't it? Yeah. It's brilliant because like he cuts through all the jargon. It's not only complexity, right? Like, yeah. And he even acknowledges like, hey, Bernie reads the business section. You know, mm -hmm. she she keeps up with the market. She's got to pull something. She's not a financial expert. Yeah. And, and that's OK, because sure. this idea of investing success, it's not about these complicated formulas totally. or insider information. It's about having... Yeah. Yeah, that's a little... That framework and the patience to stick with it. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a really key difference between, yeah. you know, how Buffett views the market and how a lot of the rest of the financial media right. wants to portray it right. It's all about totally. short-term gains. Yeah. What's the hot stock? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Buffett is the exact opposite. He's like the antithesis. Yeah, play the long game. Find companies that you can hold for years or decades. You got it. And he actually addresses this right away in the letter. Okay. Because one of the things that might seem confusing if you're just like glancing at it. Yeah. Is Berkshire's net earnings. Yeah, their net earnings fluctuate so much year to year. Yeah, 2021, they're up to 90 billion. Right. Then boom, 2022 loss of 23 billion. Right. 2023 back up to 96 billion. Wild. It's like, what? is going on. Right. It's enough to give you whiplash just reading it. Yeah. But that actually highlights, I think, a really key difference yeah. in how he views the market, right? So okay. these net earnings figures that we're talking about that you see that <laughs> dominate the headlines, right. those include the unrealized gains and losses from their stock portfolio. Okay. And as you can imagine, a yeah. stock portfolio as big as Berkshire's yeah is going to fluctuate right. quite a bit. So these official numbers mm -hmm. that like the analysts obsess over, yes. that everyone's reporting on, right. they don't even really reflect how well Maybe the businesses gonna... are actually getting. That's up. exactly what Buffett is getting at. Really? He's saying these fluctuations are meaningless wow. for evaluating Berkshire's true value, okay. especially for the long-term investor. So what does he want us to focus on? He wants you to focus on what he calls Operating earnings. Operating earnings. Oh, okay. All right, so help me unpack this. Yeah. Because I think this is really important. It is. For understanding his whole perspective. For sure. So we got to look beyond the stock market ticker every day. Yeah. Forget about the earnings reports. Mm -hmm. We've got to focus on how much cash the company is mm -hmm. actually generating yeah. from its real businesses. Precisely. Right. Yeah. Like right. that's what operating earnings is. It's a much clearer picture of the underlying strength okay. and profitability of a company. Interesting. Stripped away from all the noise of the market, which yeah. Buffett says is the most well, important thing okay. for the long-term investor. I like it. You know? All right, so operating earnings. There you go. So this whole like operating earnings thing. Yeah. This is really at the heart of how Buffett like thinks about investing. Right, oh, absolutely. It's not about like playing the short game, no. you know, like day trading, mm -hmm. trying to time the market perfectly. Really. He's looking for these companies. He can just like park it yeah, and like leave it there for years. Yeah, he wants to own these companies for decades. Years and years and years. Right. And he's really upfront yeah. about how hard it's gotten yeah. to find Definitely. those really great companies. It's really hard. Especially now that Berkshire's so huge, right? Well, yeah, he even says it yeah. in the letter. He's like... I think he says, like... Those days are long behind us. Size did us in. Yeah. Like, think about that for a second. That's crazy. Yeah, the Oracle of Omaha is saying... Right. Like, we are too big. It's almost a paradox. To find companies to buy. Yeah, you've got all this money. That will actually move the needle. You're, like, drowning in capital. It's a great problem to have. Yeah, but it's still a problem, right? Yeah. It is. You need these rare companies, but yeah. they also have to be big enough absolutely to, like to make a difference. Make a difference in Berkshire's portfolio, right? For sure. And and I think and remember, Buffett hates issuing shares. 
Yeah. So he can't just go out and raise a bunch more money. It's not like he can just like go get more. Right. He's limited to what Berkshire's businesses generate. Right. And then finding ways to deploy it. So you got to be picky. Oh, yeah. You can't just like. Super picky. Throw money at anything. You got to be really, really picky. But it goes beyond just the numbers, right? Absolutely. It's not just about crunching numbers and looking at balance sheets. You got to look at the people. It's about the people. The people running these companies. Yeah, because he says he'd rather invest in a yes. mediocre business mm -hmm. run by exceptional people. A hundred people. Than an amazing business run by like. Right. So. so mediocre not, people. Right. Yeah. And that can be really hard to judge. Right. right. That's so. Like, weird. how do you really know? You really don't. If someone's going to be a good manager. It's one of the hardest. Things. Or if they're full of it. And he's been burned before. He even quotes this guy. Yeah. In the letter Hugh McCulloch mm -hmm. from 1863. Wow. Who said something like, Let's hear it. Never deal with a rascal under the expectation okay. that you can prevent him from cheating you. That's good advice. Right. Yeah. Like you can't just assume Yo, that no. you're going to outsmart right. everyone. Even Buffett's been fooled. He admits that. Yeah. He's like, I've made mistakes. He's made some bad bets on people. I've misjudged people. It happens. Right. You just hope to learn from it. But like he really focuses on integrity. Huge. Trustworthiness. Absolutely. He wants people who are going to be around for the long haul. For sure. Not just like right. looking for a quick buck. Looking for their next payday. And this all plays into his idea yeah. of thinking like a long-term owner. An owner. Not a trader. Yes, exactly. And he uses Coca-Cola. And American Express. <laughs> Classic. As like the prime example. Those are like the quintessential or he's like, Buffett well, stocks. I didn't buy or sell a single share right. of either company in 2023. I love it. I'm just going to let them do their thing. Just let them keep compounding. Right. Keep spitting out cash. But that doesn't mean he's afraid no. to make big moves. If he sees something he likes. Right. If the right opportunity comes along. Yeah. He's not going to hesitate. Right. And I think Occidental Petroleum okay. yeah. is a great example of that. Interesting pick. He clearly sees something. There's something there. In Vicki Holub, the CEO. Yeah. And her ability to, like, navigate this crazy energy market. Right. It's a tough business. Right. And this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. Because he's not just betting on oil prices going up. Right. He sees long-term value in Occidental's assets. Okay. Their focus on, like, carbon capture. Interesting. Right, like these new technologies. Yeah. So he's looking ahead. Thinking long term as always. Right. And and this leads us to like yeah. some of the challenges that Berkshire's facing. Okay. Because it's not all sunshine and roses. No, it never is. Right. Like and even Buffett. Even the Oracle. Makes mistakes. Yeah. And he's very open about that. Refreshing, isn't it? Yeah. He's actually really hard on himself. Yeah. About this one decision. Which one? In the energy sector. Oh, yeah. He calls it a costly mistake. And... It had to do with underestimating Okay. how some of the changing regulations... Yeah, the regulatory landscape is always shifting. ...would impact Berkshire Hathaway energy. It's tough to predict. And this is where things get kind of scary, I think. Okay. For anyone in the utility industry. Yeah. He does not paint a rosy picture. No. He's like, buckle up. Yeah. Because we've got climate change. Mm -hmm. We've got all this political pressure. Right. You've got aging infrastructure. It's a lot. It's a mess. Right. And it's expensive. It's not just like flipping a switch. No pun intended. Right. Yeah. This is complicated stuff. So what's the solution? Well, I think what he's getting at is okay. that some of these private utilities yeah. might not even be able to afford Interesting. to make the changes wow. that need to happen. So what does that mean? Like, I don't know if he even knows. Nationalization. More public utilities. He doesn't really say. Yeah. But it's kind of ominous, right? Yeah, when Buffett's worried, it's serious. Exactly. And then on top of that, okay. you've got BNSF. The railroad. The railroad giant. Yeah. And he's talking about how they have to spend well, yeah. billions of dollars. Every year. Just to maintain. Just to keep the trains running. All the tracks and the bridges. That's and a massive operation. The equipment. Yeah. And he's like, that never goes away. Right. It's constant upkeep. Those costs are always there. Always. And then you add in the risks. Oh, yeah. Like, what happens if the train derails? Right. Or... That's a disaster. You're transporting hazardous materials. Yeah. That's a whole other level. It's a huge responsibility. Huge. And I think what really struck me... Okay. ...is he talks about the toll it takes on the workers. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
These are tough jobs. The people who are out there yeah. keeping everything moving. Long hours, tough conditions. And we don't really think about them much. They're the unsung heroes of the economy. But they're the ones who make it all work. Absolutely. And even then, yeah. he's a little worried. About the railroad industry. Yeah, like he sees some headwinds. Like what? More regulations. Of course. The labor negotiation. Always tricky. People are looking for alternative ways to transport things. Yeah, are railroads even going to be relevant in like 20 years? Right. It makes you think. So even these businesses that seem kind of boring. Railroads, utilities. Yeah, right. They're actually like... They're fascinating. Fascinating. They're like little microcosms of the entire economy. Exactly. And this is why Buffett's so good. He sees it all. He sees the big picture. Connects all the dots. But then he brings it back down. To the businesses. To the fundamentals. It makes it all make sense. Right. And he's always looking for value. Always. And that leads us to like... What's he buying now? Well, one of his favorites. Okay. Insurance. He does love insurance. He's like, insurance is the bedrock. The bedrock of... Berkshire? Of Berkshire. <laughs> Solid as a rock. He loves it. What is it about insurance that he loves so much? Well, he's been saying this forever. Yeah. But it's like they're in the business of managing risk. Okay. Right? Right. They collect the premiums up front mm -hmm. and then they pay out later. Hopefully less than they brought in. Exactly. Right. So if you're good at it, yeah. you have this amazing stream yeah, of profit. That float. The float. He loves that float. And he can use that money. To buy more companies. To invest in other things. It's brilliant. And he trusts Ajit Jain. Oh, yeah. Ajit Jain's the man. To manage it all. He's like the Warren Buffett of insurance. He says he's the best in the world. One of the best, for sure. And it's funny. Mm -hmm. He has this whole thing in the letter. Okay. About this, like, Omaha effect. Oh, yeah, the Omaha effect. Right. What is it about Omaha? He's like, how is it possible? All these brilliant people. The, all these brilliant people. In the middle of nowhere. Ended up in Omaha, Nebraska. It's crazy, right? Like, you've got Buffett, mm -hmm. Charlie Munger, cool. Ajit, Jane, yeah. Greg Abel. Right. All drawn to this, like... It's not like it's Silicon Valley. Random place <laughs> in the middle of the country. Maybe there's something in the water. Right. The corn-fed magic. So we've covered a lot today. So much to unpack with Buffett. But I think what it comes down yeah. to. What are the big takeaways? Patience. Patience always. Finding great managers. Can't go wrong with great people. And thinking long term. Forget the short game. Don't try to time the market.